I'm a little busy right now. <laughs> Did turn off your radio? Yes, it does. <laughs> okay, it was off. I'm Agent X, aka Jesse Krenz. Um, you may know me from such popular things as introducing everyone else. <laughs> and hit speak again. This time I'm speaking, so it'll be a little different and crazy. Um, I'm the acting operations manager slash president of the Hacker Foundation, which will be a real body in later today at about six up in boardroom D. Feel free to come on up. Uh, I'm Nicholas Farr, acting secretary treasurer of the Hacker Foundation. In the mic. Um, Can everybody hear me better now? I'm Nicholas Farr, acting secretary treasurer of the Hacker Foundation. Also, there's a guy that looks just like me who was a speaker during in this room. I uh, have nothing to do with him. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the whole point behind the Hacker Foundation is to serve as an umbrella organization uh, for people doing any kind of service, technological research, um, anything any organization that would be at DEF CON is somebody that we can help serve. The, the point behind it um, is to uh, take care of all of the paperwork that you don't want to take care of. So uh, this is really what it is. It's very simple. You have good ideas. You want to formalize them, maybe get some grant money, maybe fund some money from your great rich uncle. You want to be a legitimate sort of organization of some sort. Maybe you want to go into Kosovo and run telephone lines, and you need UN sanctioning, and you need to front it through something that exists. Boom, this is how you do it. You talk to us. It's a very simple process. Uh, what we provide is immediate IRS 501c3 status for any projects that would normally operate under a 501c3 umbrella, specifically uh, projects that deal towards humanitarian relief, freedom of expression, free flow of information, anything that would operate under those auspices. That, so you're looking at things like open source mine detection robots. Um, there's a shitload of mines in the world, and they're blowing people's legs off all over the place. Um, we've got predators that shoot things down. They cost lots, but it would be great if we had a little robot that could go out there and find mines, dig them up, and remove them. Uh, other things, uh, think about using VoIP technology in you know, unique ways, um, such as making it possible for people in, say, the slums of Honduras to call their buddy working here in Vegas, send them money. Uh, other projects include uh, roll your own banking systems. Uh, if you want to get a credit union, if you want to start up a credit union in a foreign country and you need some banking software, and remember, we're talking micro. Micro amounts of money make a big difference in these places. We're talking really bad poverty. So you can get uh, some licensed and approved uh, credit union operations software from the, uh, from the World Banking Association from your $5,000 um, plus a $1,000 fee per terminal. Um, and it runs in DOS on 486, sort of. It's that bad. Yeah. It, you look at like lots of stuff like that, and you want to make little changes. Um, they're very easy to do. I mean, if someone was to sit down and write banking software to uh, run a credit union that used MySQL, SSL, PHP, something advanced, um, you'd definitely be making a big impact. Uh, if you want to, de that's also a great way if you want to de uh, destabilize the global uh, economy. Uh, we also provide institutional support for your research and service projects. Uh, if you have ever applied for a grant, uh, usually grant people, grant funders, do not like to give money straight to individuals. Um, they like it to be administered through a university, through some kind of uh, nonprofit organization, an NGO. We realize that a lot of the people who attend DEF CON and would be eligible for that grant funding who, through just hobbying outside of uh, their professional work jobs, don't have access to, or, to an organization that they can apply for grant funding through. That's why we're here. If you have a hobby and you know of a grant and you want to apply for it, you come talk to us, you fill out the grant application, put our name on it, you're all good. So one of the big projects that we started with, and this is what happened, is, here's a little short history of why this is here. Uh, about three years ago, 
Nick and I were hanging out, and we were talking about Doctors Without Borders and how they were kicking ass and taking names all over the world, helping people live better lives. And we said, you know, it would be great if we could do something like that with our skills. Unfortunately, you know, we need sanctioning and all this other stuff to get in there. Uh, so we had a meeting, and we said, with some other people, and we said, we want to do this thing called Hackers for Humanity. And everybody had these totally different ideas about what that meant. So what we decided to do instead was um, create a umbrella company, an umbrella organization that covers all those issues. Hackers for Humanity specifically is a NGO that goes into crisis areas in the world and does tech support. We set up networks, we'll do uh, we'll set up radio nets, we'll do all the things that NGOs aren't very good at so they can concentrate on their core competencies. Uh, and we're, we're also thinking about getting into rehabilitation and training for crisis areas so that when, so essentially bringing real phone technology into places that have been torn by strife and war for years and years, like Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, there's no reason that Halliburton there needs to make all that money. That money can be recycled back into the economy and do a lot more good. And the fact of the matter is that people who are in this room and attending this conference know exactly how to do these things for far less money and manage to make them far more resilient um, than for-profit corporations can. Yeah. And they're wasting my money, your money, and everybody's money. It's a waste of our time. Uh, and we also provide uh, the administrative support for groups that are fought, that for groups that are doing this research. Um, anything that's related towards the organizational mission, a lot of the things that we've been mentioning, and a couple of the things by extension that we haven't, um, we can provide all of that support um, that we won't find in a network. Uh, so tax deductible donation status right away for your project, specifically open source coding would be a good example of this. Uh, so hacktivism projects would be a good example. We aren't actually, we have no political interests, but we understand that some of the activities that we support may have political impact. We're not trying to rig elections, but if people can read the, the New York Times in China, that may change some things. Uncensoring. Uncensor yeah, censoring issues. Also, if you have an open source coding project out there that you believe has some sort of charitable aim, uh, a lot of people have PayPal donation buttons. But corporations and other people who would be likely to fund those projects uh, seem kind of leery about donating to just a random PayPal account. If you believe that your project has a charitable aim, you can come talk to us. Uh, and all donations through the project under our auspices could be tax deductible. And that's a really big thing for corporations that are using the software that you're writing uh, to support the projects that you're writing. Um, we wouldn't take anything off the top of that. Basically, people donate to that PayPal account. We send you the exact amount of money that they sent us. One of the things to remember is that we're not uh, a money laundering front, <laughs> though it does sound that way. <laughs> um, he's going to be a CPA, so that we, you know, we'll take care of that. Uh, we also don't want to, you know, end up funding cyber Al Qaeda. So um, we will be doing some oversight with the, where the money goes and what it's spent on, because that would be really bad if we did that by accident. Also, the organization as a whole, the people who um, the people who run it, the people who spend their time helping you out, um, also do things like hosting events, maintaining online forums to help all of the projects that would be working under our auspices to work better together. There seems to be a disconnect. That's one of the great things about DEF CON, is that it brings people who otherwise wouldn't mix together. Just the chance random encounter um, with somebody that, you know, friend of a friend, uh, creates a lot of interesting synergies, if there are any corporate types out there that like the word synergies. Synergy. 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 <laughs> uh, did you want to talk about these? Yeah. Um, so connecting projects with component goals and efforts. Uh, for example, we have some people we know who work uh, at the Open Course Road program, and the uh, and we know people in Iraq who want to use Open Courseware in their educational program. Unfortunately, the uh, there's no internet in Iraq right now that's very stable, so it's much easier just to get the entire Open Courseware load, stick it on a hard drive, stick it on a plane, and send it over there. That's the kind of stuff we can help with. Uh, if you just want to help and you have an interest, we can hook you up with people. Uh, and if you are 
vice versa. If you're somebody who has a need um, and you need technology help, we can do it the other way. The uh, uh, also, another idea that uh, one of the people who's on our board had was the Hacker Benevolent Society. Uh, not, we're still working out the tax and legal implications of how we're going to do this, but the essential idea being, uh, it seems that especially after, you know, the dot coms, after, especially after the dot com blah, right after dot bomb, it seems that a lot of people here are living under a feast or famine sort of thing. Uh, that you know, one year somebody will have a great job and be making a lot of money. Their friend will have nothing. Next year, the situation will have reversed. And a lot of the times, when you've been fired and when you're living check to check um, exorbitantly, you suddenly have no money. You have to start selling a lot of your hardware. And then, when you're trying to get back into things, you realize you have no money to buy that hardware. The idea behind the Hacker Benevolent Society is to create a fund uh, for people when they have money to be able to donate to and get the tax benefits of, and when they don't have money to be able to uh, pull out just to buy a laptop, just to buy you know, a cell phone for a couple of months to try to get a job. Something so that we can all try to break you know, the sort of feast or famine cycle that a lot of people who attend this conference live under. Yeah. So public awareness, everyone's you know, evil hackers. Ooga booga. Um, so we're going to deal with that on a, we're going to try and deal with that. Um, we're going to get in touch with the press and deal with stuff like that, uh, specifically uh, negative images. EFF has really helped with this kind of stuff, but um, doing essentially advocacy on what we are. I mean, most people think that hacking is about breaking into things, but hacking is also about creating things, uh, and that's a often forgotten facet. Hackers don't have a PR firm. Now they do. be that. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, and again, we provide overall administrative support. If you're having trouble branding or marketing what you're doing, if you're having trouble uh, just getting it out there as a distinct project, we can help you with that. Again, we also help with funding administration. And a lot of times people, especially hackers, have a very hard time managing finances, managing large groups of people. I'm sure we've all had you know, some kind of problems with that. A lot of what we want to try to do is to help organize those things, is to help give you very simple tools to help manage money, to help manage people, to help manage other outside resources so that you can focus again on what your core competencies are. And also, you know, being the Hacker Foundation, we want to be as transparent as possible. A lot of times, uh, all you'll know about any particular nonprofit organization is what they put in their annual report. Um, we want to be able to make sure that all the information, without compromising other people's privacy rights, is out there. All funding that goes out, and specifically to what it goes to, is public information. Um, all incoming institutional funding, if there are any corporate funding, any foundation funding, we want you to know where our money is coming from. The only thing that we'll keep anonymous by request are small donations. We want to try to be as transparent as possible so that you know exactly what's coming in, what's going out, and what's happening in between. All of our board meeting minutes are public. Um, our board members rotate annually. Uh, board membership is open to pretty much anybody who has an interest in forwarding the goals of the organization. And our bo annual board elections are held every year here at DEF CON for your convenience. So you should come on up and see us tonight. About 6, executive boardroom. It's uh, second floor. It's right by the pool. It's that stairway you're never allowed to go up. Um, one night you can just don't go on the roof. Uh, we are still planning and pending. Uh, is anybody from the IRS here? Good. Um, we're hopefully going to get that stuff taken care of very quickly. The IRS is a nice, monolithic, and very slow organization, so we're taking their own sweet time on this one. All of our paperwork is organized. We are organized as a California um, charitable corporation. Everything, every piece of paper, every form, every person that we could have possibly contacted has been contacted, and we're expecting um, our positive determination letter any moment now. Thanks. So, any questions? I say you were away for a long time.
Wait, 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 wait. You're saying too much. You gotta come up here and grab a mic. Okay, <laughs> 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 you, you, you have to repeat the question. Yeah, I have to repeat the question. I have to repeat the question, and I'm not so good at that, so. I'm just gonna make some comments on this presentation. Okay. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm very pleased to see this, but I think your basic problem is the word hacker mm -hmm. has been taken and reserved, so to speak. It's just like, it's almost like a trademark. You're not supposed to use somebody's trademark. Mm -hmm. If you try to sell a beverage called Coca-Cola, they're going to come down on you hard because they own the legal rights to that name. In the public mind, a hacker is a certain kind of person. Okay, It's in the mind of the public. It's in the mind of large parts of the press, of law enforcement, of corporations. There is no way that you're ever going to change that perception. Uh, the term I've heard is like boiling the ocean. Okay, and I'm quite serious about that. I'm a marketing guy. I know. I, so I'm also in the marketing industry, unfortunately. Wh why? I'm also in the marketing industry, unfortunately. Well, I, I am too, and I'm un unfortunately unemployed, but that's, mm -hmm. that's later. We'll talk about the benevolence of society for you, too. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so my point is you need to, f what you really are describing is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. You're describing a group of independent software and hardware people mm -hmm. who want to do projects for the welfare of humanity, so to speak. Uh, just like doctors without borders, in effect. Well, and that's one of our sub-projects. Exactly. Yes. But the point is, you need a name that more reflects doctors without borders or, or um, software developers for humanity or something like that, without sounding too goo-goo, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're never going to win with hackers. You're also describing, it sounds like a professional association, it reminds me of the associations for aging rock and rollers, <laughs> which actually, seriously, which include an old age home. So I was waiting to hear something about a retirement home for hackers. Well, that, that was a, that's actually one of the ideas behind the Better yeah, I mean, Born Society. I look around. <laughs> My knee's getting bad. I know it's coming. Yeah. I mean, you, know, you all know you're not getting younger here. Every DEF CON's a little harder, I know. Yeah, I mean, when, when I look around this audience, I see mostly people younger than me. Uh, some of you are probably young enough to almost be my kids' age because they're in college, one's in grad school. Um, I'm a little older than that, so, but I'm not a hacker as such. I just, I'm a security marketing guy who wants to hear what people are talking about. And by the way, I'm looking for a job in Silicon Valley. Hey, 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 hey. put the mic down now. <laughs> Love you, thank you. Um, the, uh, he is in marketing, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let Nick take this one. <laughs> uh, it's funny you mentioned it. Uh, I actually was trying to describe this to a Texas trial attorney um, on the flight actually over to Vermont where we were starting to get together the IRS paperwork. And to a certain extent, uh, I do agree with you. Um, and the two things that I have to say sort of in response to that are, one, right now we are just starting out. And the people, the people that are going to be involved right now understand what the term hacker really means. Um, and as we, and of course, as any small organization starts growing, they don't get known so much for the. I mean, yes, the name is a big red flag. But but, you know based, but based on what we're what we're looking at as our growth model right now is to use is to sort of yeah use and leverage that as a name. You know, it the word hacker does stand out in the press. But yet, when you see that, you look at it, you're interested in it. We know enough about the press on how to manipulate and how to leverage that term so that people see the word hacker and then see good deed. People see the word hacker and then they see good project. Yeah, I know. Mm. It will be difficult at first, and a lot of people won't get it. it, and it, it, it the, other, the other issue with this is that we're going to get called bad anyway. I, I actually sat around and kicked around names for days and days and days and days and days. And it occurred to me, you know what? We're going to get sucked into it anyway. It's fine. Uh, somebody else has a question? So someone over there had a question, some woman. Jennifer has spotted you already. You! <laughs> Raise your hands up high if you're see. No, come on up. Well, what's your question? Loudly. Um, yes, we do. We actually do have international members. Um, we've had a lot of support from some of our colleagues in England. Um, and we are looking to make more friends across the oceans. Uh, we have friends seen and unseen in all over the world. <laughs> Next question.
-hmm. the, the birth rate drop off being a problem or being a plus? Um, are you talking about just how to get phone lines in there fast? We should talk after. Um, it's, it's, it, there's a couple solutions. I don't want to just make an ass of myself with some wrong ones right off the bat. Um, but regardless of the technical, uh, the technical implementation there, we're implementing telephone systems at little or no cost. They get the equipment for free, and we teach them how to operate it uh, at as close to free as possible. If they have any free time to help use it, we teach them how to repair it. We tell them how to contact us if they need spare parts or they need other assistance. It's not. Um, one of those examples that you typically see in developing uh, societies and developing nations where people are only interested in throwing in a telecommunications infrastructure when there's money to be made on it. Um, you know, we saw that as a side effect of what happened uh, during the Pinochet dictatorship in Chile. Yes, it was an extraordinarily repressive regime. Um, many of the most brilliant minds of Chile were either killed, made, disappeared, or left Chile. But at the same time, uh, he, made, he brought an environment there where people had an interest in making a lot of money by implementing a telecommunications infrastructure. Right now, they have a much more liberalized government. Pinochet is this close to being indicted for his, uh, for his crimes against humanity. But at the same time, Chile enjoys the benefits of that in telecommunications infrastructure that was put there for a profit motive. What we're trying to do is do the same thing under a nonprofit auspice. That's the whole point behind the Hacker Foundation, to try to bring a lot of these developing nations into the world, excluding uh, the normal profit motive that comes when people throw those telecommunications infrastructures there. Yeah. The other thing is that we're looking to build durable solutions. Um, we have no interest in what's called t-shirt charity. Uh, we are wanting to build durable long-term solutions that the locals can maintain and build. Um, and we see it as a benefit. It's kind of scary in a way. Um, a lot of people have had their jobs outsourced from here because India, which used to be a third world country, um, is now a pretty high-tech place. Uh, I look at that in two ways. Uh, that's the hand of fate in action, but also, you know what that means? There's a lot more Indian hackers, and now there's a 2600 meeting there. That's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is a lot of times uh, development organizations will attempt to impose uh, a certain brand of technology as sort of a cultural imperialism. The Hacker Foundation is not interested in doing that. What we're interested in doing is finding out what people want uh, and then figuring out how to implement it. For instance, uh, a friend of mine, Dirk Koning in Grand Rapids, who runs the uh, Community Media Center there, uh, went to a village in Africa to try to improve the communications infrastructure amongst uh, a group of related tribes. Um, and you know, he went there, he had all these plans, voice over IP, wireless networking, tin can 8 or 2.11, that sort of thing. And then when he got to talking to the chief, the chief said, well, you know, if I had a bell, that all the villages could hear so that they knew when to come into the village, that's all I need. They figured that out, and that's what ended up getting implemented. Uh, we're not interested in anything other than helping people achieve what they want to achieve. And if a bell ends up being the technological solution that they want, and we can provide it, that's what we'll do. Any more questions? Please. OK, if you want to talk to us, oh, yeah. Uh, in time or just cash? Um, we did all our own paperwork and filed our own stuff. It was seven, it, seven hundred dollars. But you know what? We spent a weekend turning our brains into mush, literally, uh, doing IRS filings. And God damn. And uh, you know. <laughs> No, no Real Press is a very good book, but if you have no experience or background in a nonprofit organization, it, a lot of the language and a lot of the verbiage gets to be overwhelming. You know, I, I've worked under universities and nonprofits. Uh, you know, my most substantive job in my career was working for a 501c3 computer recycler. Uh, I was the general manager of my uh, high school, of my college radio station, and we were largely independent. A lot of this, a lot of the things and a lot of the terms that they use, uh, the meaning of you really have to learn just being out in the real world. That if you're interested in starting a 501c3 on your own, that you go out there and start volunteering and start trying to help out people in the administration of another nonprofit so that you know exactly what they're talking about uh, when they're working on other things. But the total dollar investment is pretty high. Also, what state do you live in? California. 
Okay, California is one of the most friendly states to do it, but again, uh, friendly states typically have the most administrative Overhead. Overhead. We yeah. waited an exorbitantly a long time to, for our paperwork to travel through the system. Almost a year. And that was for a $25 form. Uh, it, it happened during budget cuts. I've seen fees of $200 an hour. No, no. I've seen flat fees of $200 online on a little Google ad. <laughs> and looking back in time, I'm way more willing to think about it. Um, but you have to. Re you really do have to look at what you're what you're doing with there. Um, thank you. We are done. We're, um, but we'll answer questions out in registration. Uh, thank you very much. We hope to see more of you. Hackerfoundation.org. Applications are on the DEF CON CD if you're interested. Yeah.